Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. A while ago, I started on a project prototype that requires a miniature cardboard tube, like a small version of the ones you get from a roll of paper towels. These tubes go by many names, such as craft tubes, cardboard tubes, or paper tubes. I have multiple projects in mind for the future that require mini cardboard tubes. Since you can't buy them anywhere, I learned how to make them thanks to Seamster on Instructables.com, and now I'll be showing you all how to make them for yourself. So let's get started with some of the tools and materials we'll need for this project. The first thing necessary to make a paper tube is a form to give the tube its shape. You'll need a precisely made hard cylindrical object like a metal tube you can find in hobby stores. A stainless steel one works best, but brass will also work. Avoid using softer metals like aluminum and copper. Another thing we'll need is a roll of craft paper. Most department stores will sell these in the office section. We also need a roll of masking paper, otherwise known as painter's paper. The small size of the forms we'll be using makes the thicker craft paper hard to work with. The masking paper is easier to work with and likely makes for a stronger cardboard tube. Any water-soluble wood glue will be needed to bind the layers of paper together. We also need some water to make the glue a bit thinner. To mix the two together, we'll need a paintbrush and a non-porous dish. Precision matters when making these tiny tubes, so a paper trimmer is the best option for cutting the strips. Additionally, we need a roll of tape, which I forgot to show in the video. Alright, the first thing we need to do is cut a strip of craft paper that will be the base layer for the tube. Start by cutting out a section of paper that's about as long as your paper trimmer. This one, along with most other trimmers of this type, have a 12 inch cutting length. Now we need to trim the edges of the paper to make it a nice, clean cut section with 90 degree corners. Use the grid on your trimmer to make sure the angles are good. Once our craft paper is rectangular with straight perpendicular edges, we can cut out the strip. The desirable width of the strip depends on the diameter of your form. If your strip is too wide, wrapping it around the form can be really difficult. If it's too narrow, your finished tube won't be very long. A good rule of thumb that I just found out is that the width of the paper strip should be twice as long as the diameter of the form that you're using. This rule will yield good strips every time. Since these strips need to be cut with precision, you have to use whatever you can to judge whether or not they're straight. The ruler on my trimmer is clear so I can see that the paper reaches about halfway up those larger dashes. Once I know that it lines up to the same point on the ruler all the way down, I can cut the strip out. Using a ruler, I can see that one end measures exactly 13 millimeters wide, and the other one does too. This strip was cut perfectly, but generally you don't have to worry if the ends of your strip are different width if it's by a millimeter or less. Let's wrap the paper strip around our form without overlapping it. This allows us to make sure that the strip has a good width and the tube will be long enough. That's looking great, so let's get our masking paper out now. Since the masking paper is already in a perfectly cut narrow roll, we don't have to cut all the edges to make them straight. Simply cut a sheet off that's at least the cutting length of your paper trimmer. If the sheet is too long for the trimmer, simply cut some of the length off to make it more manageable. You could actually save this piece of paper to make some thinner strips later on. Now let's insert the masking paper and cut some strips out just like before. Cut them about the same width as you cut the base layer strip. The amount of strips you cut depends entirely on how thick and therefore how strong you want your paper tube to be. Here's a chart I made for guidelines on how many strips you should use. I'll be using two strips for the tube in this video. Once you've cut out the amount of strips you want to use from the masking paper, measure both ends of them and check that the tube will be long enough like before. If they're looking good, clear off the area so we can start making the tube. Before we start, make sure your surface is clean and won't be affected by water. Since I have a paper surface, I'll be covering it with some wax paper. With a clean waterproof surface, get out your wood glue, paper strips, waterproof plate, paintbrush, and some water. We'll also need our form, the best choice being a stainless steel tube, and some tape. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is grab our base layer strip, the craft paper, and wrap it perfectly around the form a couple times. There should be no gaps between each spiral, and they also shouldn't be overlapping. Once you've got it tightly wrapped around the tube a couple of times, hold it in place and wrap a strip of tape around it. The tape should be holding the top end of the paper strip, and it should be touching the form as well. This will ensure the base layer doesn't move as you're adding more layers. 
Continue wrapping the strip around the form, again making sure that the spiral isn't overlapping itself. Wrap another strip of tape around the bottom end just like you did for the top. Now our base layer is looking good. Next we'll be mixing the glue and the water together. Pour some glue out followed by water in about a 1 to 1 ratio. You could choose to add more water and dilute the glue more, or add less water for a thicker mix. I haven't tested it out, but I'd assume a more diluted glue will make a lighter but slightly weaker tube. Thicker mixtures will probably give the tube more integrity. Mix the glue and water together until it looks kind of like eggnog. Now let's use our brush to coat a strip of masking paper, leaving about an inch of dry space. I found that this makes wrapping the tube a lot easier since it allows us to position the strip before gluing it on. Put the dry end of the strip around the form and position it at an angle so that the spiral lines up perfectly without overlapping. Once you have the positioning right, begin wrapping the strip around the tube while holding the dry end in place. After a few layers around, you can let go of the end and focus on wrapping the strip. Slowly rotate the tube with one hand while holding the strip with the other. Do your best to keep the strip from overlapping itself or leaving large gaps. If you reach the end of your base layer with extra length of paper, just tear it off and smooth it out. Now we can go back and glue down the other end. I figured I might as well use the extra glue from the strip I tore off. Once your paper strip is wrapped neatly around your tube, press down on it firmly while rolling it in the leftover glue. This will ensure a good bond, thereby making the tube stronger. I'm going to put another layer of masking paper on my tube, but you can choose to leave it at one or add a bunch more layers depending on how strong you need your tube to be. When you're done applying the layers, set the tube up so that the paper isn't touching anything and let it dry for about two minutes. This is a good time to clean your surface and get rid of any leftover glue. Alright, with a clean and dry surface again, grab your tube and a hobby knife. Position the knife far enough down so that it's below the last of the tape, which should be about half an inch below the top of the paper. Apply a little pressure to the knife as you roll the tube, and try to cut it in a straight line. It's easy to accidentally cut in an endless spiral by not having the knife straight, so just keep an eye on the cut. Don't put too much pressure on the tube, or you'll end up cutting into the form you're using. Continue rolling until you've cut all the way around on the same straight line around three times. When you feel like you've cut through the paper, peel off the tape. Fingernails come in handy to get the paper separated. If some paper is still attached, try cutting it again. If there's still tape under the tube, cut a new line a little lower down. Once the end is nicely cut and you pull away the paper, repeat this process for the other end of the tube. Alright, our tube is now done. However, there are a few more things we still need to do. Start by carefully sliding it off the form and setting it upright. Next, we need to clean the form to get rid of any glue or other residue. Use a wet paper towel to wipe it off and then dry it. With our form clean and dry, we actually want to slide the still drying tube back onto it so it doesn't lose its shape. Then set it somewhere so that the paper tube isn't touching anything. A block of styrofoam actually works pretty nicely. After a few minutes, you'll want to remove the tube again and put it back on the other end of the form. Do this a couple more times after waiting a few minutes each. This ensures that the tube doesn't stick to the form, and it also helps it dry a little faster. Ta-da! After a few hours, our tube is dry enough to remove from the form, but I recommend you let it dry for at least a full day before putting it to use. As you can see, we've made a perfectly round, smooth mini paper tube that you can't really buy anywhere. These tubes are great for hobbies like model rocketry, scale aviation, pyrotechnics, and more. I hope you hobbyists and crafters out there found this video helpful. I'm trying to grow so that I can do YouTube full time, so if you did like this video, please support me by giving it a thumbs up, sharing it, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.